Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you to the Academy. It's very nice to be here. <clears throat> um, I'm going to show you uh, maybe f m maybe it's one project or, or maybe it's five projects, but it's one, it begins with a very, very small thing and it ends with still a small thing but bigger. Maybe the, the small thing you can hold in your hand and the biggest thing is maybe about the size of this room. So, and some, <coughs> and in between, there, there some some of the things are made. Some of the things are still being thought about, and some of the things are being finished. So, s a couple of them are new, and a couple of them are old. I I, I thought to call it West, and I because I kind of thinking about the. Kind of thinking about. Uh, let's see if this works. No. Sorry. Here. Huh. Uh, you are here, <coughs> kind of position. And uh, the, uh, I suppose in, uh, the theme might be something about construction of place as a fiction and as a fact, and uh, 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 maybe a th tendency towards making difference. Uh, so the projects are all in Ireland, and the projects are all on the west coast. Obviously, Ireland is off the west coast of Europe. So all the projects, essentially, are, on, um, are along this edge. So they're all about two hours apart. Uh, the first one is uh, a souvenir. It was a, we were asked to make a souvenir <coughs> of Ireland by the government. One of these things you might buy in an airport, one of these things you might send to your friend, one of these things you might give as a thank you, one of these things of a place. <clears throat> and uh, I thought that uh, there is an interesting condition in the place, the headspace of the island where in the old annals they have, um, in the sagas there is a, they always end up playing a game. <clears throat> it's either called Fihil Chess, or there is this game called Brand Dove. And <coughs> it's, des <coughs> it's described, but um, nobody knows what, uh, what it looked like or what it actually was. But there are clues. And I thought it would be very nice to, re to remake this Brand Dove. Brand Dove means uh, the, ra the raven, the, the black crow. One idea uh, that Ireland projects of itself is, uh, is of, 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 of a kind of a wilderness. Of course it's not, but, uh, and, and that it's unspoilt, which of, it really isn't, and that, um, that uh, we have this kind of mystic, mystic land in the middle of it, about a third of its surface area, which is bog land, which is uh, where uh, a lot of ma Bronze Age artifacts in particular um, have been uh, have been found because so it's a kind of a repository. It's also a kind of an insult to be a bog man or a bog woman. Uh, it, you know, it's like uh, Silvatico or something, or uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, 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 uncouth. But it um, but uh, but um, kind of most profoundly, it's also how Ireland was urbanized in a way that they cut canals into the boglands in the centre. Drained, dr drained and destroyed them, and then um, cut them up um, and brought them back into the cities via the canals and used the turf for fuel. So, and it's a very poor quality carbon fuel. But so, so the idea of cutting turf is deep in the psyche of hearth and home and all of that. 
they also then use it, use the peat to um, build fields. So you, you clear a field of the stones. So the, the, dimension of a, the dimension of a field is generally the distance you can carry the piece of stone to clear it. And then you add peat to it and you build it up and you, so you construct the landscape as you construct the image of the, of the place. This is the, this game is called, is, this board was found on the Isle of Man, which is the island between England, let's say Great Britain and Ireland. And um, it's the kind of closest clue, perhaps, to this game of Bram Dove. This is a, this is a Taffel board. T Taffel is an old game, <coughs> a Viking game. And it's interesting, as the, Vic uh, the original taffle boards are about are 16 by 16 grid. And as, as, they co as it moves across the west coast of Europe with the Vikings, it becomes a smaller and smaller grid until the smallest grid, which is the 7 by 7. <coughs> it's not like chess in that... Uh, 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 it's not played uh, with one force against the other across the board. It's played from the middle out. So essentially, <clears throat> it's uh, like most games, it's a, it's a rehearsal. It's a strategy game, but it's a rehearsal. And it's a way they think of, for the Vikings taught younger Vikings how to invade islands. Basically, you take the center from the edges. Uh, the center is defended. Uh, but outnumbered. So the circle in the middle is the Brannon in the Irish version of it, perhaps. So you, you're holding that center. You have your raven in the middle, and then the, the Brannon, and then there are four defenders in a cruciform, and then on the edges are the attackers, which are coming in from the side. If I am playing defense, I am, I am outnumbered, and I must get my, my raven to the edge. If I can get it to the edge, or most which is quite difficult, or most particularly, if I can produce a stalemate, I win. So you're playing for stalemate, rather like our, our profession. It's all end game. So I thought, let's do this. Let's, let's make this game again um, as the souvenir, as the product, as the small architecture, as the gift. So in the middle, you have the, you have the grid, but now the board is a circle. It is an island. And, and this, the center position is marked in red. Again, it's a 7 by 7 grid. And then I think, let's make it out of the island. So we take, this is hand-worn turf. So let, we, make the, we, make the, we make the material of turf, and then we make the figures as the stacked figures, as the dried figures of turf. So that the actual gift in the airport, that you actually are exporting pieces of the island. Or you get, you get a gift of a piece of the island, in the way that you might get a a piece of Caesar as a gift. So this is the setup. So we have, we have to make the field, the ground, the site, and then we have to make the architectures on it and the architectures move. So as we all know, when we play chess, this fascinating thing of these characters, which are, it, it even has a, a small building in it, in the, in the, in the rook or the castle, so here we have three figures. The center, the Brannon, which is the raven. And then, on, and then she, and traditionally in all these Celtic traditions, the, 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 the raven on Brandov, the black bird, is continuous. It's called crew in Irish, but it's le corbusier. It's, it's, it's corvus. It's the crow. And it's the destroyer or lamenter. Uh, 
it, and in particular in the Irish sagas, it's the black, the bird that um, flies in the sky. She is a harbinger of death. She's a warrior goddess. If she lands on your shoulder, you're dead. She chooses who dies in the battle. So, so the setup is this. So you have butterfly roofs versus pitched roofs with a figure in the center, or you have Vikings versus locals or whatever way you want to look at it. But you can see here, there, there she is, crew. Here are her four defenders. These are the locals. And here are the invaders. This is the beginning move. And so it, the play begins. This is a section, this is a 40, 40 mil diameter piece of section of turf that we've uh, compacted, made a press and compacted it really, really hard as an extrusion and then cut it to make all the pieces. So it all fits back together again as a section or as a core of the island, which is then wrapped in felt. And her position is marked with nail varnish, red nail varnish. So <coughs> these, these are the jackdaws. These are the Vikings. These are the ones on the outside, drawn as a planned section, plans and elevations in the traditional way. So here you start to see the diagram, very simple inversions. And here is she, the centerpiece, which stands akimbo uh, or, or rolls. It has two ways of, it has two ways of facing. So you start to make either, you know, you, make, you can make settlements of various kinds and it's always continuously moving. It's a kind of, uh, I think it's a kind of urbanism. So here is crew, here she is, and she is the default between the cuttings of the attackers and the defenders. She's the middle piece. It sits like that. Well, obviously then she can jump up on her hind legs, if you like, into an attack position. That's her supine on the felt, and you see she's sitting over the Branon, the center, the center of the island. Here she goes again. A very aggressive piece of turf. As cool. But actually, in the middle of the island, kind of traditionally, there is a place that is that point, that point that, yet that red spot is this place. And in the middle of this place, there is E fall oi. See it here? That is the middle. And that is a stone. And that traditionally was where you would crown the king or queen of Ireland. Way back. And uh, like Excalibur or something, it, it, would only it, it was only a true, uh, uh, a true proposition that the, it was a king or queen if a, the blackbird crew would land on the stone and lament, Quah, crow. That's a real place. That, that's the stone. That's on Branon. That's the mark. So now the board is a map. So when you get it, you, this is what you get. You get a section of turf in a green rubber band that holds the whole thing together, and then take the band off in a triangular coffin, and then when you take the band off, all the pieces come apart, and you set the thing up, and it's rolled in the felt, which isn't in that photograph. So that's the gift. Do you have crows here? Yeah? They're everywhere. <laughs> they're the most intelligent bird, you know. They've been demonstrated to play. There are, there are videos on the internet where you can see them. Um, there's a little slope of ice, 
and they're going around it and sliding down <laughs> and, and going back again for more. Uh, they, they say they can count. They say they have recognition. They, they say they have memory. But, th but that project comes out of this earlier project. This is tw from 2000 because what uh, this is now about to become illegal where the government owns the central bog lands of the island and they, m using a German system for since the 1930s, have been basically pulling it apart, ripping open the bogs and, and mechanizing it like this, drying it and selling it so you could buy little sections of the island in shops. That was the fuel. We didn't have coal. We don't have coal. So peat briquettes were still are, but won't be for long, were the, the way, the urban way still of lighting fires, of, of, of heating your home. And they're very cheap, you know, three euro, you would buy a, a section of the island this big, wrapped in a piece of pro polypropylene, and it was just the way, 12.8 kilograms, you could carry it home and burn it. So, in 2000, Ireland decided that it was going to represent itself in the Venice Biennale, and it never had done that before, either in art or architecture, officially. It never had a national pavilion. And of course, the Giardini are, is another kind of map of the world, uh, coloni in, its, in various kinds of colon colonial guises. And I was asked, perhaps, to do the first um, participation and uh, there was very little funds, and we, uh, it seemed, uh, and the offer was to show some drawings in the Venezuelan pavilion because they weren't using it that year. And that felt like not the right thing to do, that we should make a pavilion, we should, we should not do drawings, we should do something, and we should make some kind of engagement with, into, the, into the position of the power play of national pavilions in the Giardini. So uh, I thought that maybe we, we, we needed to have some, make it out of something that was free. So the government make this stuff. This is a bale of briquettes, baled. And we need to be, a, so we, maybe we could bring something as a gift. And then by it being a gift, we wouldn't have to bring it back again. So, can we, can, so we negotiated it that the Irish government would formally gift 22.12 tons of its land mass to the Italian government and that so the so that the so that we so that so that we, there was an, an exchange from a, a larger island to a smaller island and that uh, the Venetians then would have this when we were finished with it and it's of course very good mulch for gardens so basically it becomes destroyed mulched and it becomes the fertilizer for the Giardini so that it, uh, we have a presence permanently. So this is what happens. So here's a bale, here it's stacked. So when we make a project, then when you're in the pavilion, you're actually in a cutting, you're in the depth. Of that. The only bit of Italy up there is the sky. The rest of it is you're in Ireland. And it's corbels, there's no lintels, there's a piece of secret structure, and it makes a north point it's an inhabitable north point. That's the site plan with the Trajan N. So it's called N cubed or N3, and it's an, it's an N. It's a north. Piranesi made architectures out of letters. This is his N. So I thought, that's all right then. And of course, N is for Nicholas, San Nicolo. Nicholas of Myra, and Nicholas of Myra is patron saint of many things, of course, but he's, uh, he's, but he's most famously, really, after, after well, there's a series of interesting patronages he's had, but he owners of property. Nicholas of Myra is patron saint of owners of property who we all need. And uh, he's also, of course, Santa Claus who gives, if you're bold, you get fuel as your present. So Nicholas San Nicolo 
he's, half of his remains are actually interred in, right beside the Lido. The other half are in Bari because it was trans he was translated. But the, so the thing became some kind of martyrium, n inhabitable north point you can see in plan. It's, an, it's, a, it's a north, it's an N, and it somehow has this sort of embedded narrative with one cast rubber uh, shelf with playing cards in it which make which kind of tie this all together. I felt otherwise it was just going to be a sculpture, whereas it had to be a pavilion. It had an idea about national representation, but it also had to somehow give information. So plan sections, elevations, as it happened, and then small truffle-like object, which has shiny edges and cut edges, oriented true north um, with, a, with, a, with a north point nor en entrance plate. There are cards inside the thing. You travel through two corbel chambers to get into it. Those cards then riff on various themes, particularly you see the bottom right where Ireland is actually drawn from the position of Ireland, so N is on its side. And then you see turf cutting, this traditional idea, and you have Santa Claus and so on. The Bacintoro, San Nicolo de Lido is here. Um, and on the back you have actually Santa's bones, the Galeris Oratory, Corporal Construction, the North Point site, the yard from which St. Nicholas of Myra in Dublin, this is this peat sales yard that the turf came from, and so on, that field I showed you. So within it, it really smells, it's incredible smell, particularly after the rain, and it's about repetition and staggering and, 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 uh, and uh, the heft of material and these quite thrilling dark spaces that you move through. And so on. It's, it's one of those. There are quite a few of those. This is in Kerry. Um, this is one of the icons of the country. It's, a, it's, a, it's an image as well as an object. It's, its construction method is quite amazing. A uh, very powerful thing where the outside is the kind of outside of the inside, but the inside is more. And then this is very close to it. And this is a, a broken wall, a born. Oops, pardon me. I think this is the same guy in the picture, actually. <laughs> but, um, but they, um, so you have this born, and then you have this tower. This tower is from 1805. They built about 75 of them all around the west coast and back to Dublin. And there was a signal, a, a, a signal point up here, and they would use semaphore in case Napoleon invaded that they could actually bounce a relay uh, flag system all the way back to Dublin to alert um, that, that we were being invaded. Uh, so. These things, by their nature, it, 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 it never ha the weather was too bad, <laughs> so the signals never worked. But they built 79 of these things, and they're all along the coast, and uh, in vary to, to varying degrees of decrepitude. But they are always, of course, in remarkable places. And we've been asked to, um, all along the west coast at the moment, there's a thing called the Wild Atlantic Way, which is when you come to Ireland, you can, you can basically have a, have a, a curated trail all along the coast where you go to certain vantage points and, uh, and they're all interconnected and it's a way of joining up the dots of local industry and, bringing, bring, and extending dwell time and giving a coordinated image of the place. So the, uh, our job is to tidy this one up and again make another vantage point from which you can see the Skellig Islands but also it's a, cynically about making you stay longer, spending more money locally. So this is its position, that's it there. S the Skelligs are out here. You'll know the Skelligs, they are kind of Mount Athos, but more famously now they're the setting for the last Star Wars. So there's suddenly this huge wave of tourists who want to see this remarkable thing um, because it's kind of sci-fi although it's actually a 7th century um, um, monastery out, out in the sea, 
quite a remarkable thing. So this is the site plan. This thing here, you can see this, there's the tower, and then you've got this half round, apsidal, bone. The wall is intact here, but it's gone here, and then these are cliffs. This is one just, an, uh, maybe, a, uh, um, uh, this is another one that's in, our one has been adjusted since, but this is what they look like now. This one is on in this year. So they're, they have double mysticuli. It's basically a small tower house, but, uh, but in, inside there was a timber construction, so, and there's a hearth, and then w strangely on, on the opposite side, the, the, the entrance door was halfway up, and quite pretty things, kind of those kind of objects that are, small and huge kind of simultaneously. And there it is currently with the wall, which has basically fallen into the sea. The top of the, the, top of the, the original Georgian building has been pulled down with, uh, in the first war, the British Admiralty who used it again for, for Morse and various concrete accre accretions have happened. So as you approach it, And this is the remains of the mast that they hung the, the flags upon. And in the distance, that's Skellig. This one here. So, and you can see all the wall is gone. So the, these visitors here are outside of the wall. The wall is all collapsed. The question is to bring people to that place, kind of tighten up the vantage point fix the point of view, orient it to a degree, and put back the wall, but don't destroy the view. But when you put the wall back, you don't get this rush. Um, so the job, re and to do little, to have no impact, to our, to, to, that it is left wild. The minimum inter interpretation, building regulation safety, no intervention per se. This is the Skellig. It's quite a thing. You see, you come up here and up here and up here. And up here, there are lots of these little beehive huts, which are corbel construction again. So that's the situation. You can see the fallen wall, the empty ruin. This, uh, this thing is so powerful in a, in a ragged order landscape to have these two right angles here is actually kind of more powerful, weirdly, than this thing. You, this thing is fantastic in silhouette from a distance, but when you are there, that enclosure and the relationship between, between this square plan, small tower, and, it, and, and its door and its gate and these edges is really something. The, the other, of course, I should say, uh, part of the program is that all along here is a colony of chuffs, corvus. We're back to crows. This play is very rare, and we cannot disturb in the construction methods this uh, colony. So here we are again. And there you can see the fallen wall. So we, may, we remake this, and then we have to remake this as don't, again, so, something that gives another kind of view. So we're going to make a, stair, make a stairs in here and make a wall. So the project becomes a repair, a ha-ha. There's the, there's the signal tower. And the inside, where we take this, we, the, the roof of the thing is in situ concrete on steel, rebar, on, on steel sections from the 1960s, which have completely corroded. The roof is, is no good. It's a good place to shelter. So we're gonna, the proposition is take off the in situ roof and redevelop it as a stairs. So collapse the roof into a staircase, like a st stalactite. Um, so you can go up through it into the light, but if it's raining and you're sheltering in there, it actually becomes a massive collector and water starts to rush down back into the body of the building. And we touch the building as little as possible. So basically, cast the slab and hang the stairs entirely off the 
old walls. Um, and no, don't touch the floor. No foundations. And then we take the, we take the local stone, which is Valencia stone, which is very, very beautiful. And we start to do a riff where we do this chevaux de frise, where the, where the, where the, where the, where the wall starts to open up and expand and make point of view and make one punched point of view here and then track back and close down and, and rejoin the existing wall, yeah, more or less in the same plan. And then by making this ha-ha here, it levels enough ground here that you can stand and take a selfie at this point here, which is the brief. Take a that is essentially the brief spoken like we want, I want to know where do I stand exactly for the money shot. So the wall, we start to adjust the wall. So the old, we use a traditional stone that we pick back up and then we get some special stones, riven stones made. They're not drawn as riven at the moment to begin to make this where we, you know, you can use it, I don't know, in regulations here, but you can have a hundred mil gap in a, in a, in a, in a handrail. So we can use the 100 mil gap is legal and we have to be at 1.1 and after that it's game on. So I don't know, Shiva, you, it, we in old Bronze Age um, defenses they have chevaux de frise where you take stones and you, you do it too I think in Brittany and places like that. You, you put stones in so that nobody can run, nobody can run straight at the, at, the at the encampment. It's a defensive mechanism. But actually they make this very incredible landscape of standing stones that are falling over and it's a kind of complexity to them. So we think about this wall as a kind of, and it's kind of a cross between a fence and a wall, if you know what I mean. In the, wind, the wind can go through it. Um, so you can start to see it morphing as it goes around. So it starts the, at the top, the old wall is continued and starts to stand on standing stones. Standing stones then emerge with the topography and start to roll and open out a chevaux de frise. And then they end up uh, coming back through and reinforcing infill with the, old, with, the old, with the old stone that's picked up and then rejoin into the, into the, into the, into the existing wall. So th things like this happen. And obviously you're standing here, but then the construction and the, the construction of the wall allows different kind of conditions of viewing to the, to the chuffs, to the skelligs, and back into the land. So that's where we join. We take off these accretions here. We use this stone, which, and then we, we take it from the local quarry down the way. We make some cut pieces and we keep going with what we have. There are kind of, basically this is, this is very traditional, um, st very casual stone walling, lets the wind through, but also lets obviously light through. And then you get this kind of ordering here, and then you can get this kind of ordering here. So we have a material, if we're gonna say that everything is 1.1, 1.1, a slab of stone 1.1 effectively, 100 mil thick, uh, cut only on the top edge, riven on the sides, a bit wobbly, with 100 mil diameter, and you start knitting with it. You can do things like this. Is this a clear wall? So again, you can open that up and bend it between 100 mil, and you start to get certain kinds of views through it. You can do this where you stick it through, so you've got the new pieces coming in and reinforcing then backfill sections of, 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 of the, found, of the existing rubble walls. This is, this is actually the quarry that the stone will come from. And in, this is actually the quarry, this is the, this is the section of the quarry which is kind of remarkable and which somebody has actually made into an altar as well. You can see the, the apparition of Virgin Mary here at the top, although it's still a live quarry. This is the uh, stalactite in another cave north of there. It's, so this is the idea of the stairs. It's look no hands, uh, a, a living thing, a concrete thing that hangs out of the ceiling. So into that space, which we do very little to, we, we, we do this. So the tower remains more or less the same, a slight adjustment on the silhouette, 
these are very early drawings, as you can see, and then this thing happens, which is in situ concrete with the board mark joints on the outside, uh, polished on the outside so that it becomes a, a it, it takes the light through the existing windows, and then on the inside it's shot blasted, and then it's got this very strange handrail because what's happening is that you're putting a circle into a square off center, so the whole geometry of the top collapses down into the entrance. So it becomes this thing that does this, 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 that. And leaves you with the view at the top and a place out of the wind where you can look at the Skellig. So the tower house, that's a little, this is a real tower house in that this is a, you know, 15th century tower house. There's lots and lots of the, these on the west coast. There's, I think, something like 360 of them. You can see them within half an hour of one another. They're all over the place. Some of them still lived in, some of them in some ruins, some of them in really wonderful ruins where you just get the cross section. All built off a grant by King J uh, John, uh, where, uh, which was again about controlling the position in the landscape. And so you have, you know, Bartizans, Masticoli, a repetition of windows that are all the, s all the same. Uh, 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 again, they have a kind of a curious scale, but they are the tallest buildings in the Irish landscape, generally, and they're not that big, maybe five stories high, but we don't have big things gen generally. Um, and you find these in fields, you find houses built up against them, you find cattle kept in them, and so on. They're great fun. But they have this beautiful kind of can uh, uh, argument about servant and serve, the construction of them, you know, you have mural staircases, uh, latrines, everything is packed into the, into the construction on the edges to clear a room inside. And then the room inside are, are stacked, and then within the room, the stacked rooms inside, which are untempered, within that then you, you, you line it as required, and then within that again, you make a small architecture of galleries and four poster beds and so on, and you wrap those in blankets. And so we have an architecture that's ordered uh, materially, but also thermodynamically. So here's a section such as, such as, so you can see how it works. Big rooms served by small rooms, simple rooms ser served by complex room, and then a stacked arrangement. And in plan, you start to see in particular, say a Lucan proposition here, or this is garderobe, this is viewpoint, this is stairs, this is, I don't know what it is, this room, but that's the main one. But all the windows are the same. If you want to make a bigger window, you just put more, to get, you put more together. All in, all in limestone, generally. And as well as being in the countryside, they also, of course, were in the city. So this is Galway in the, on the west coast. And you can see pieces of them still today um, built into the fabric of the town. Here's a nice drawing which we used for the planners. We were arguing, well, we need to make a tall building in the old town. And we're going to do it just like this because they used to make these things tower houses and we're going to call it, it's a tower house. So we're going to make a new tower house in the town. And look, you've, you have them there before and you have fragments of them still. So typologically, but also picturesquely, it becomes uh, kind of more than a concept, actually useful in terms of communication. And then curiously, a driver of the design process. So we have a site that's very small extrude it, maximize it, and put a roof on it, and, and, and call it a tower house, stack the rooms. So this is a cinema. This is the site. The site is too small, which is great. This is a very old map, but we're in here. We're, in, we're again on the site of a the ha what happened was the client buys a house and garden ha from 1820, which is half of a double house. But the argument is if we're going to make a cinema, and it's an art house cinema, it will not be on the edge of town. It will not be a black box. It's a public house. And so we will spend all the money that we have to buy the best piece of um, real estate closest to the center that we possibly can. And then after that, we will ram it as <laughs> uh, with as much program as we possibly can. <laughs> but, but the, so the argument is, uh, is a very much an old-fashioned argument about the idea of bolstering the old town, bringing people into it, and then the idea of a, 
uh, public building as a, an extrapolation of the street, a kind of a messy, sloppy, genuine public house. So here, New Dock Road has come through and cut this here. So we're here. So there's the site which they buy. So we have this house and its garden. And there's a matching house over it with an archway. See that X? That's an archway. This is the Corrib, which is a very fast river. This is the docks. This is the Atlantic. This is a promontory into the Atlantic, effectively. It's quite a wild place in terms of weather. This is, all, this is an old city wall. There are pieces of tower house here, here, and over here, embedded, and various medieval fragments. And there's the project where we therefore keep, I go back, so we are asked, this street is quite charming, in a, not in a very special way, but it has, it, has, it has a rhythm as a piece. So we're asked to keep the facade. So we keep actually the facade and the front hip. By keep, I mean we take it down and put it back up again as if you didn't notice. And then at the back, we put the big body of the cinema. The cinema is three, they're not big rooms. The biggest room is not much bigger than this. Three stack cinemas uh, with a bar, a coffee shop, and then ancillary stuff. In the old house, we put the institution, which is an archive of film from the west of Ireland. Weirdly, Galway has a huge film culture. There's a very famous um, film festival there called the FLA. There's a huge interest in, in, in European cinema in particular. This project was part funded by the EU as an idea about art house cinema, which combats Hollywood. It, it celebrates indigenous European film. So the roof is oriented north here. So the section becomes as I say, a stack. It's, this is a monolithic construction, all in situ concrete, pitched roof in slate with a weather vane. Cinema, cinema, cinema. Bar, tea room, foyer, box office. Foyer is outside. The only thing that's inside here really are the red bits, and these are the red-lined, curtained cinema rooms. All of this is outside. It, you have, you're wearing your jacket. The bar is inside. So we have a, the same order of construction as the tower house, where you temper it only where you need to. So the management from the street up to the, the darkened box of the cinema, you, it's only at the moment that you open that door and walk in there that it is fully acoustically managed and fully thermally managed. Until that point, it's a slow bring from the daylight into the darkness, both acoustically as well as thermally, if you like. And then a reverse back out into that. So this strategy offers pro great prov provocations and, pr and propositions for spaces that are inside but have windows that have no glass in them. Spaces that are outside that, feel like, that actually feel like they're inside. Spaces, and you, you get into ideas of degrees of enclosure. It also saves money. And it also confuses where the, where the front is. So if we have no door, then we are, am, am I in an alleyway? You know when you come out the back entrance of the theater and you suddenly arrive in the back street. Where does the back street end and the front street begin? So the thing actually becomes in a way and not a, a, a complexity in the middle of the old town. A bit like the pro problem with the Galway is much as I love it, is you know, it m says it's a medieval town, but there isn't quite enough of it. So I think we were trying to make a bit more medieval. If we want, want a bit more, and then so that means then that you know, is, that means then that this building has no truck with clarity, or uh, 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 let's say the modern, the modern, the modern diagram which of course is very, very related to the idea of cinema. So it's, but there is a moment in cinema where, uh, uh, when there's a really interesting moment in cinema when cinema begins, like, you know, Joyce, of course, set up the first cinema in Dublin. The first cinema in Ireland was run by James Joyce with Italian backing called the Volta. 
and he ran it into the ground. <laughs> but yeah, so but the but the but that moment when when they were projecting films in theaters, you know, and we still have many of them. Those really charming, they, where it's a stage and it's a moving picture, and we are sitting in a kind of a deluxe interior that's still very pub, very much a public house. I I thought of that 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 was where we needed to be. So a certain kind of deco glamour comes into it, then a sort of a frugal decoration, a kind of a, a, a sense of, uh, a sense of um, you know, we have to have red neon and we have to have red curtains and we have to have colored lights and Vegeta's all in situ country. So the language of the thing, and then there's kind of an architecture of letters, the sign, the cinema, you know, cineac, that, 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 that's, that these kind of images kind of compress one on top of another of a kind of a, an electronic key per a silo. And the language of the project, starts to begin you so the but this is the bottom plan this is the biggest room uh, so you can see we're just maxing out this is the shape that we have we're maxing out we need as many seats as we can get and we need the best projection that we can get and then upstairs this is the ground where it meets the street it plays it plays off the two geometries, the Dock Road 80s street and then the Merchants Road. And basically it jumps about and, and does what it can under the circumstances. So you can come up under the old arch, you can come up here, this is up at this level for tidal reasons. This is a tea room, this goes down, this stairs is outside and goes up to the bar so you don't have to bother with cinema if you really don't want to. You buy your tickets here and your suites or you come, come in here. So the thing is completely porous and actually you might need a friend who knows the place to show it to you first, and but then you you know, <laughs> the, like 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 towns. And so you come up, and this is a bar. So the bar again, uh, the Irish bar, which is so famous, is actually you know, it's not like the English bar or or your bars here. It's a domestic space, generally a converted house. So it's an accretion of very very small moves, very very complex, lots of mirrors, lots of amber and generally you're using a 50 mil stud for proximity, so, you, so you're making snugs. So it's a constellation of small rooms. It's a, a necklace, and it should not be intelligible. It should be the opposite. The public house, the pub. On this side, you have the, you have the, you have this is the services room, and above that you have a room for the institution. Then you have the middle cinema, which is Okay, so the three cinemas are, are dressed in red, red velvet, or a version of. And each of them are dressed like dresses. So the one at the bottom underneath is done like a marquee. It's just that we want, by using red curtains, we don't need to finish the walls. You just stick pa tissue paper and insulation, and then we just dress it. So one downstairs is dressed like a tent, just up and over and over and down, and so on, like you're at a wedding, but in red velvet. This one is more de de deco. This one is all in the section. You'll see it goes like this. So it's like, um, like a rara skirt. You know rara, those skirts? You know, or a flapper dress. It just keeps moving in layers, the, the, the curtain. And then the top one is done very much. It has a little stage for presentations for stand-up comedy or lectures like this, or more or less the same thing, I suppose, and or our interviews with, with, with directors, it has a little stage, and it has a little curtain that comes back, and it's dressed around, and it has the privilege of the roof. So it has that kind of space that's mm, chapel-esque. So up, and then this is the top one. So you can see the strategy, I think, now. So we're trying, we're clearing the room, and then we're packing all the program, the servant spaces, or getting light in, or this is a solar collector that, that drives right down through and naturally ventilates the bar, but allows this acoustic uh, lo lobby to look back down into the bar. We've got a roiling back staircase, and then we've got a more landscape front staircase, and then we've got the bar sta staircase. So, the, so again, it's just take what you have and push it over the street and get as much as we can, and then there's the old piece here. And then the roof is just a pyramid roof that when it then accepts on a north orientation the crenellation of the found site, it becomes picturesque. So the, so the thing sits in the town like this. Now, I should say it's on site now in terms of fit out, so there's no red neon. What you're looking really is, is at is shell and core, 
and um, it will be finished at Christmas time. Um, uh, so these pictures are, you know, like it's just as it is today. It's a building site. So, so the gable of the old house, the face is kept, and the gable is cropped. And then I have a new face here, and it says Palos, which is Palazzo, you know, palace. So it's called a picture palace. The sign, this client said it's called a picture palace, and that drives again. But this is actually the air intake to the cinema below. And these two fathers, these, two, these are diacritics. Father is the long, in Irish, father. It means, like father, I suppose, it's long sound. So these diacritics become lancet windows to a staircase behind. Again, there's bad jokes, like the sea of palace in here, you can actually see through it, it's a coil of neon. And then this is the only clear window which stacks and that looks back to the river which is behind you and your orientation position. All the other windows in the building are colored. So they're all thought about as lenses. So relationship, this is the old house, this is the existing archway. Now this is new, but it's, you know, like all, all that's original here is the stone and the sills. This is concrete, you see it there, and then it turns and becomes that, and then this jumps in behind it. So you can see that there, for instance, this becomes a double height archway with a lantern light here, so this space collapses upward and downward and makes a forced perspective as you come through here. Uh, like that. So you have an in situ world, a a old in situ concrete, limestone concrete, limestone, limestone, render, limestone. You can see that staircase behind you, above you, doing the same thing again. So obviously, but within the shenanigans of the poche, then the exploitation spatially is some kind of version of cinema, isn't it? Where you're always pushing and pulling the space to manipulate the viewer. And then you can color it by, you have an open, you put light in it, so you're, it's like you're gelling a scene. So in the bar, all the windows are orange, so the light is orange. In the front stairs, all the light is red. And in the back stairs, all the light is green. It's actually physically green. So you're in a concrete world with a metal stairs and the light is all green. So this is going in. So, and then you can see that's the stairs up to the bar and you're approaching the foyer. You're still outside. It's raining. Uh, that's, you know, so this is just a publicity s shot I from when we were on site at the beginning. The whole thing is excavated out of granite. Th it, took, uh, it took them something like four, or five, if I remember correctly, four or five months to dig that hole. <laughs> it wasn't expected. It was meant to be made up ground. There was an argument about that. <laughs> but that's, but that, so he, I should say, he, he is sitting in the bottom cinema. So here, I just wanted to, so here, you know, you can see this is the bottom cinema and this kind of folder, this is just loose fabric tracking all the way down. So in three dimensions, it starts to make quite a romantic room. And it's a matter of fact, after that, it's black rubber floor, it's black, uh, you know, charcoal seating, best we can get, and it's all played away. And the most biggest game is trying to get the running man signs out of your point of view. This is night, artificial night. This is, this is the opposite of outside. So this has dif different, it has no, it is, not host it is completely artificial. It is not hostage to any demands of the real. In fact, it's the opposite. So it's kind of, this is the middle one. Again, you can see those layers. It's going, so you're in a room that's, the building is entirely staircases. The auditoria are staircases, slower ones. The building is entirely, there's a, there's, so, it, so the thing is always tracking above and below itself. So that's the bar and so on. That's the top one, which has this big structural thing that hangs down here, which lights it as a theater, you know, like a, like a lighting rig, you can gel it up. But you can see the section here, and there's the roof, it's in the <coughs> roof there. There's that little stage and the curtain in front of it. So the curtain, as you come in, you come in underneath the curtain, and then you sit down here, and then this curtain pulls back over you. So that's that room, now it's finished. 
these are these conditions, then this is looking down into the, that solar chimney, where the you know, air is going to be is dragged up out of that. So this is in the blue stairs, but you're looking into the solar chimney, which is looking down into the bar, and on, you can see what the windows are doing. So you get this kind of thing, where, the, where, the, where there's a kind of a thickness to the color, where you're actually in it. And this is its back stairs, which is dramatic and noisy, and done like, um, done like a fire escape. Well, because it is a fire escape, but it's also tried to be as fire escapey as it could be. So it's an object within a big room, freestanding, and it just spans between the space available, like bridging, and makes a lot of noise. And again, you know, this is the tea room. It's wrapped in glass, in mirrored glass, and then clear glass in a false perspective. So it's always tracking down to a door and then expanding out again. But the whole room is just a, basically a, a glassy room, with a stone floor, which is the stone of the street and a concrete ceiling. I should say that, the, that the, structurally the thing is tra is transfers at a certain point and what we're doing is we're arguing mostly in the, because there are, no, there are no breaks in the construction, there are no thermal breaks. So our plans are driven by the fact that temperature will regulate across a meter depth of concrete. And if it's outside and there's condensation, better. So again, just the, and then of course all the doors inside are done as little, this aperture is always the same, it's academ academy ratio, so you get portrait and landscape versions of vision, so you're always looking through something. So it's framing within framing within framing, in the way that a traditional bar in Ireland is done, and it's, 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 it's these kind of relationships that you get, and that you kind of have a baggy kind of space that is acceptance of, of you know the com commercial reality of like people like to put pictures up on the walls and all of that kind of stuff so let's 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 multiply this so you get there so there's one of there's a window which is a double depth that's a vitrine there's an object in there that's the top of the stairs then they these windows in the bar they project onto the floor they start to do all different things so you start to see this thing as a house of windows that are all are as drawings that you're done by, with Pat Scott. There's every single one of those is a drawing. These are neon drawings. These are fathers. And then these are, these are all glazed drawings. So that when you, even when you're within the thing, it reverses your view of what's going on outside during the day and projects this color, as I say. But also then at night, when it's full of artificial light, it becomes this magic lantern as Bergman would describe cinema. And so it is still kind of got uh, some kind of idea about being Norman or being some kind of castle thing. And the spaces in between, small spaces packed with people, that's what you want. So that's the, that's the, that's the ticket office there. That's the view to the river, you've just come up the archway. Let's say they're queuing for a ticket. This is just a shop on the street. You know, you, you can you can buy you can buy you can buy. It's a corner shop. It's a big window. Detail. Then, and then I suppose I play up all this chamfering in the concrete. So the order of construction of this then becomes, reflects on a different scale in the order of the timber, which reflects on a different scale the orders of glazing, and then the orders of curtain, and so on. So all the architectures are separate, and so as they, as they kind of didactically order the, the condition of the tempering, so it means that you don't get one language, or even you don't get, it's as a tolerances between this, tolerances between each order of, of, of material and construction so that things slip. So you start to get this kind of complexity but the, then, so this one goes over here and sorts itself out over here, as it should, because it wants to and needs to. But this one can do a different thing completely. But relate, and then, so you, and then you get things like the snug in the bar can look down at your date, and the out, the under is the over, and so on. And then I, d then the, the window is a very simple thing with a, just a super cartoon sill because it's wet, it's rainy, so it just, 
it just goes a little bit further than you really need. And you get this place between, and on the right you see there's a little tattoo, which is a relief that we put into the wall, which is a votive, to show you later. Right there. That's the front door, maybe. Uh, you can see it starts to take its own consequences and then come back and you go back up with it. And then when you get in, it does things that, it, again, it's just pushed between the two orders. The structural order shifts on the stairs, on the stairs literally, and back. And we're always trying to get you back and over and make this, this one uh, particularly as a kind of a hill town, a, a porto stairs, you could say. And then the handrails behave as they need to behave. Again, another kind of system. Uh, and you get into some of the concrete is shot blasted, some of it's raw, some of it's polished. One, you can see there, that uh, this chamfered order slides past this one on that. You get pieces that are super polished and pieces that are not. And so certain windows then start, do you know Nosferatu staircase? So you start to set up situations. Because so that space, I'm inside looking through a window, and that's inside, but it's not inside. This, I'm in a tempered space looking into an untempered space that's lit from outside. So uh, that's an outside space, I would think. But then there's a more outside set space outside of that. And then beyond that, again, there's a slightly more outside space again. <laughs> and so on. And uh, so this, you turn at the stairs and you have this red window which floods the thing. And then you look more closely at this red window. And then you look right through the, so you're now looking across that little gap. And this is, uh, the client is very fond of this. This is a little stone, this is a little tomb that's down the road. And she always had a picture of it in her. I just said, we should make something that you might like. So she should say, give me this picture. And so, uh, so it's in Clarence Bridge. So we went down and had a ca made a rubber cast, made a mold, and put her, put her back in, reversed, which upset her somehow. But anyway, reversed. But it's, uh, so when you look through that window, you look across that little gap. So you're looking through a Pat Scott at this thing. So she's framed. Uh, they think that it's a book of revelations. Uh, where a woman appears in the sky surrounded by stars with her feet on the moon. It seems kind of perfect for a movie star kind of position. Um, and, and there is this really funny thing about in Nock, the first apparition in Nock, which is a kind of like um, uh, 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 a shrine, that she appeared on a gable, the Virgin Mary appeared on a gable uh, in the rain. It was kind of amazing. But they think that actually what was happening is this, that the parish priest had a magic lantern and it was projected, you know, in like 1880. So there's the kind of f the first film shown in my mind in Connacht is, you know, this is about that apparition. So there's it's a lovely, lovely, um, lovely relief carving which is polished around it. And so there she is. That's the, the host image. So, th so we made super big windows uh, as casements, as picture frames, and we made them, how do you make a window in a cinema? It seemed it had to be a, a still, it had to be a frame, it had to be academy ratio. So everything is academy ratio. Doors are portrait, windows are landscape. And then to research that, we, I found that we made a film in Venice about this called Delay, where we made a film about a lady watching a film, but inside the film, and that's academy ratio, she's academy ratio but I can watch you watching the film without you knowing. So it's kind of a voyeuristic thing, which is kind of about cinema, isn't it? Where you sit in a darkened room watching something very intimate besides somebody that you don't know. There's some, or you know, when you're in an art gallery and you're looking at a picture and so you find somebody you don't know looking at the same picture, it can be quite uncomfortable. There's a kind of claustrophobia about these kind of situations. And then of course it's a one-way mirror, so it all messes up and drags the architecture into it. So this, was the, so this, is, a mon this is a model of the project, if you like. And all, all this side here, this is all acoustic. These are all speakers, so she's watching that, but somebody can be here watching her and she doesn't know. There plans, sections, how it works. But it's got a little roof, it's a little apparatus. I, it, it, was a, it was a study piece for, 
the cinema. And here's another one where we're working out those windows and how you position them freestyle against an ordered interior. So it's not random. They're, they're picturesque devices, they're lenses into the spaces within. Very simple technically. Some of them open, some of them as they need to. How it, how it extrapolates across the facade. Looking back, looking out. <coughs> They're coded then by color, so that's where you know where the rooms are. If you're in red light, you know it's a certain place. If you're in yellow, you know you're in the bar. This is, this is the, all the ventilation out the back. So it's again just galvanized. And there's a little bit of, you know, a palace should have a cornice. The roof just slides off it. It's very traditional. It rains a lot there. And then it's got a weather vane because, I suppose ultimately because of the Teatro del Mondo, but uh, because it's a in the town, it navigates in the town. And they're great things to know which way is north and how, where the weather blows. So it's a north point. It's an image, a profile of a woman with a cone for an eye chasing her tail. Uh, and so it's north. I'm finished.